everybody. Okay, we are back for our next review. We are going back down under to the great land of Australia. Have a combat ration, one man. It was packaged in April of 2015. Still got a lot of life on this bad boy. Let's check out menu number A. This is just a simple clear plastic bag with a small heat seal on top. We will use our Kershaw leak to get this thing open. Cuts like butter. This is the kind of awesome touch that so many countries provide their troops. It's a scouring pad that's already impregnated with detergent to help you clean out your kit. Great, awesome pack of matches. They have two different types. They have, of course, the stormproof match and regular matches. Have a small tin of cheese. Have our breakfast muesli, fruitful breakfast muesli with skim milk, some freeze dried rice, tuna, the ADF field expedient eating shovel. Man, I love these things. From talking with some of the great guys that work at the ADF forces, they keep these things. One gentleman said he's used the same spoon for four or five years. That is amazing. That is a durable piece of kit that you probably will get in the United States with a brown MRE spoon or eating utensil. You have a sports drink, tropical flavor. Everybody's favorite, some yeast extract. M&M's, gotta love M&M's. New packaging from the last time that I've had one of these rations. It says chicken with vegetables. And I like the fact that it has multiple uh, tear pouches and it's got this standable bottom kind of meat. It's barbecue beef. I'm sure that is going to taste really good. All right, it's 250 grams. And again, for those of you Kiwis, it is a product of New Zealand. Tube of sweetened condensed milk. The Jack Lynx Stig Bar, the accessory packet. Take a look at that in a second. Ah, some fruit cake, also packaged in New Zealand. Have some toilet paper or some napkins, whichever you prefer to use it for. Um, chocolate spread, this stuff is pretty tasty. Some jam plum or plum jam. Lifesavers. And are these musk, musk flavored lifesavers? Small little chocolate ration, some biscuits, crisp breads, soup. Lastly, we have a chocolate drink. Okay, then in the accessory packet, this used to be held together by tape, but now it's actually in a little sealed bag. I'm trying not to cut myself up. And what do we have? Some sugar free gum. Another packet, same exact type, lemon lime. Some instant coffee. So two tea bags, some sugar. That's probably what these are too. Four sugars, a black pepper, tomato ketchup, some salt, a packet of Tabasco sauce. And you can't go anywhere without your Fred. And lastly, you had three rubber bands to help seal some of your things. And you can use them for other field craft related events. Okay, you're going to be able to hear my cat in the background. She is uh, not fixed and is in heat. So we're going to listen to that. Here is the instruction pack. And it gives you all these nice tips and tricks and preparations and how to sterilize water and whatnot. It also gives you an incredibly detailed listing of what's inside in the ingredients of your items. So very nice touch. It also wrapped in there was a zip seal bag. 
so you can retain some of your items and keep them waterproof. Okay, I've got all the mains laid out and I'm getting ready to throw everything that requires to be uh, heated in some boiling water. Unlike some rations, this ration doesn't really give you uh, any tips or recommendations on what to eat with what. I know the last time I did one of these reviews, everybody was like, oh, you should eat that with this or whatever. Uh, yeah. Well, I've got barbecue beef. I can't imagine that barbecue beef is going to go with uh, tuna. So I think what I'm going to do is do my barbecue beef and rice because that is something that is kind of utilized in the United States. Uh, the chicken and vegetables, that's, I'm probably just going to do that alone. And I will probably put the tuna in with the noodles. Of course, I'll leave the muesli by itself. And this is the golden pumpkin soup. Now, two of the longest things to cook are going to be, of course, the noodles and the rice. Let's get these going. Now, out in the field, you would have a cooker, something like this. It's usually a little larger, and in some cases, it's black. You can either set it face down and put your stuff underneath, or this way. I guess it really doesn't matter. And granted, these would be heated up. We'll hang on to our packets. It's two cups of water. Now you're supposed to stir and cover this up. And they were like, well, how are you going to cover this up? Well, you use your other side of your mess tin to help keep that heat in there. And we'll just let that go. And the freeze dried rice, it calls for 150 mil and then says, let stand for five to 10 minutes. And we'll seal this bag shut with a friendly binder clip. And then the golden pumpkin soup calls for 200 ml of water. Whoo, that's a little toasty. We'll give that a stir. Now the muesli. It says blend in with cold water until the consistency desired. Take a look inside here first. It's supposed to have all these nice little bits of fruit in here. And you can see those in there. They look pretty lovely. We'll just pour some in little by little. You can see that the milk, skim milk powder is already starting to reconstitute. I'm gonna need a little more. Ah, probably too much. Rat. Well anyway, <clears throat> now we have a nice <laughs> a nice bowl of usually cereal. And the reason this is called fruitful, it has apricot flakes, papaya pieces, pineapple pieces, raisins, dates, a little bit of apple, some pear, and uh, it says it's a tropical dice. Okay, I haven't touched this. I haven't put any other heat on this. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Okay, we can see that the ramen has really plumped up. It's nice and tender. We're going to drain this a little bit, but one thing that I thought was outstanding is you have seasoning options. You have a little bit of garlic, you have soy sauce, you have chili sauce, and you have two types of seasoning powder. One of them is chicken, I believe the other one is vegetable. The one thing is, is the seasoning stuff is not labeled, so I'm going to take my chances and leave it to the gods. <clears throat> and whatever this is, is a seasoning mix that we will use. Actually, that looks like fried onion. That's exactly what that is. All right, let's use, let's use the other side. It is a little solid. Maybe we'll use something else. Oh, actually it smells all right. We'll just throw all the kids in the pool and give this a nice stir. 
Now I drained some liquid off and the reason I did that is I had planned on putting my tuna in there and you can see it is with tomato and basil and these flavors are going to help infuse these noodles. Okay, we've got that a nice mix. I'm going to put this lid back on top to just keep that residual heat in there. Okay, let's get the drink started. This sports drink tropical mix, this calls for one liter of water. Of course, then we have tea, instant coffee, and our chocolate drink, which is hot chocolate, or you can drink it cold. Now, this is a relatively new ration. This was actually produced and packaged in 2014, but you can see or hear it's kind of solid. So one thing that I would recommend that you do before you open this up and you dump in solid chunks is just knead this thing out, break up those large pieces, and it'll help dissolve faster in your water. <laughs> I actually started laughing after I said that. Then again, if you're stationed at a warm climate like Fort Bragg, your water in your canteen or whatever is probably going to be pretty freaking hot to start with. So that might not be a major issue because hot water will help dissolve anything ultra quick. That's going to take a little while to absorb that liquid. There's alligator. You might be able to hear him growling. And since we had the last ration black, we'll put some of this sweetened condensed milk in here. And again, it is sealed, but it's got this little piercing thing on the end. Ooh, you gotta love the hat sound. And we'll put a little sugar in here. And of course, our tea. Oh, for thing, it's a Bell brand tea. We'll let it do its thing. And then lastly, the chocolate drink. This calls for 250 mils. And we'll give this a stir. Okay, before we throw everything on a tray, this processed cheese it does not have a ring pull. Uh, part of the problem with me using the Fred or a P51 or P38 is these are designed for right-handed people and I am a lefty, so it always makes for an interesting challenge, but I will do my best and get this open. For you all. I will have to say it's times like this that I'm almost thrilled to death of my choice of camera angle. I could have shown you me opening this but it would have been it would have been impossible. But there we go. All right let's get everything on the tray. Okay again we got all of our drinks. We have our tropical sports drink, hot chocolate, tea, and our coffee. Over here we have our little spices. We have salt and pepper with Tabasco our latrine paper in case we need it afterwards, our matches that we use to heat our water, some tomato ketchup, and the scouring pad to help us clean up again. And then this is my golden pumpkin soup. Before we get all the hot stuff on the tray, let's see what else we had in there. Again, we had our musk flavored 
lifesavers. Just found that odd, but these are quite common down under. So there we go. We got some of theirs. There is our ADF chocolate ration bar. It is a Kiwi Dude special. It has all that lovely chocolate bloom on there. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means that it has been affected by temperature swing and that the oils have surfaced. Have some of our gum. Dental gum, and it says sugar-free, so I'm sure it, can, it contains sorbitol. For those of you that... Come on! Doesn't want to come out. <clears throat> and there's four pieces inside of the bag. Some M&Ms, we'll take a look at those shortly. <clears throat> and again, we have jam, plum, or plum jam. It's Jack Link's Sports Bar. So just recall, this is for a 24-hour ration because we would expect a good quantity of food. We have some crisp breads. And I'm supposing that you could use these for breakfast. Some people said they put uh, their chocolate spread on them. Others said they put uh, some sweetened condensed milk. And others have told me that they put the yeast extract or Vegemite. But there's the chocolate spread that I just mentioned and the yeast extract. is a blueberry apple cereal bar and it just looks like a large Fig Newton. It is pretty dense. I forgot to throw our cheese over here and there was one last item that snuck away from me, this fruit cake. This looks entirely reminiscent of what I would get when I was in the army back in the 90s. And they did have fruit cake and I wasn't a fan of it then. Fruit cake. Fruit cake and liver. Those are things that I usually pass on. Okay, did a little Kiwi Dude magic. I didn't want to contaminate anything. I think the first thing that we'll plate is the rice with barbecue sauce. And like we said, this was only supposed to be for about five or ten minutes. But you can see that looks like that has reconstituted nicely. It has chilled out just a little bit. But that is a very healthy and hearty serving of rice. Give you a little look-see before I smother it in beef and barbecue sauce. Looks pretty good. Alright, these are still nice and toasty. Just want to say one more time what a fan I am of the stand-up retort pouch. Take a look in there. Looks like we have some carrot. Smells like barbecue. One thing that I do know for sure, United States barbecue and barbecue in other places around the world is sometimes considerably different. I don't know if, uh, if it's the mastery of the barbecue sauce or if people just consider barbecue something that's cooked over a a, a, over wood or charcoal, but it does have differences. That I do know. And then the chunky chicken and vegetables. Ah, uh, that kind of looks like a. Mmm. I was I was gonna say I was expecting like a cream of mushroom, but. Totally different smell. It smells like the actual spices. We have some corn, carrot, potato. It looks like minced chicken. Got most of it out of there. And unfortunately, I'm running out of tray space. So right here, this is the tuna and noodles. And the last thing that we have, of course, is the breakfast, the fruitful muesli. Right off the bat, my immediate impression of this barbecued beef over this rice is something that the Marines eat quite a bit, and it's called taco rice. 
you know, the little bits of corn in there, and let's uh, give that a try. Now, this is a sweeter barbecue sauce. Looking at the ingredients, of course, it has beef. It says the beef barbecue sauce consists of water, sugar, salt, garlic, fermented soybean, honey, soy sauce, malt syrup, cornstarch, and then a mix of spices. And it also has some carrot. It says capsicum, but I don't really taste any heat. A little bit of onion, corn, and uh, some vitamins added in there for nutrition. So this is definitely on the sweeter side and it, the rice really kind of balances it out and it might be even better if you mix these really good together because then the rice would absorb some of this liquid in the barbecue sauce. Now also if you wanted this a little more like vinegary or tangy that would probably be a good uh, time to throw in your tomato ketchup. Might also be a good time for your Tabasco sauce to really zip this up and it probably would really help with uh, chicken and vegetables. Really give that a nice zip. Well, let's give this one a try. It's more like a stew or a thick, hearty soup. Okay, as soon as I took a taste, I was like, man, there is a a malty type of uh, like sludgy kind of it, it tastes to me like like Vegemite honestly and that's exactly what it was of course there's chicken which is minced but in the stock itself it has vegetable flavors maltodextrin yeast extract and vegetable protein extract and again, it has some onions, carrots, corn, celery, potato. And then down there on the bottom, when I open this up, I said you can definitely smell a, a dominating spice, and that was rosemary. And that smell, along with that yeast extract, really makes this quite pleasant smelling. That being said, I'm going to try some of my coffee to help get some of that down. You can't really go wrong with army coffee, especially when you've got sweetened condensed milk and some sugar in there. Well, let's take a look at the noodles with the tuna. And I imagine the Tabasco sauce would be okay with this as well. However, the tomato and basil seasoning inside this tuna should have infused these noodles rather well. Let me give this a taste real quick. That's actually not too bad either. It just probably just needs a little dash of salt. And if you just wanted a slightly different flavor, of course you could take your packet and squeeze a little bit of soy sauce or some of this uh, garlic paste in there to really uh, round it out and add some flavor dimension. Let's take a swig of our tea real quick. Mm. Yep, that's pretty good too. And there's nothing in there. It is just straight up, straight up. Now for breakfast, of course you would have your fruitful muesli. Like we said, we still have a little bit of stuff and here's some of this fruit that has definitely had time to plump all back up to its yummy goodness. And we'll give that a try. Yum, yum. Surprisingly, for as long as that thing has been sitting there, it still has a, a reasonable crunch to it. Uh, I'm pretty impressed. Still have some of that milk on the bottom. It is completely infused the rest of the muesli, which that is kind of the way I like it. I like mine on the thick side. So for me, anyway, that's muy bueno. Now the golden pumpkin soup. I don't recall if I've ever had pumpkin soup before. So this is going to be a new experience. Looks okay. It smells okay. 
Well, it tastes okay too. So golden pumpkin soup. Yeah, that's definitely doable. Let's take a swig of this hot chocolate. Mmm. That actually really kind of reminds me of that Dutch hot chocolate drink. Pretty good. That has a, a nice dark chocolate taste associated with it, at least to my palate. Okay, then we've got the fruitcake. Of course, you could just eat the fruitcake as it is, or you could spread some of your chocolate spread on there, or even some of your plum jam. Whatever your desire or your taste is. Let's just try it on its own merits. Yeah, exactly like I thought it was going to taste. Just so I can tell you what's inside of this thing is uh, sultanas, currants, and raisins. And I don't know why. Maybe it's just not in my flavor palette. But man, fruitcake just does not do it for me. Let's put some of that on here and see if this uh, adds to it. All right, chocolate spread. And we'll put a little plum on this side. And of course, the plum would also go nice in your muesli if you wanted to do that for more energy. We'll give this a try first. Yep, that seems to help <laughs> significantly. Yeah, that seemed to mask. The, the flavor and we'll try some of the plum jam all right now let's give these crisp breads a try just try it on its own they are crisp I will give them that and I'm thinking what else would you possibly use the yeast extract for and this is Pretty much it, unless if you were going to take some of your yeast extract and take a spoonful and put it in some water, which I understand that some people do. But we'll put a little bit on the cracker. Now, if you've never had this before, use it very sparingly. If you if you enjoy like a a good Guinness or something to that effect, a good thick yeasty beer you will probably enjoy this but if not use it very sparingly and if you have some available use a little butter with it it will enhance the taste and if you go through the comments of my other ADF ration reviews when people talk about yeast extract or Vegemite or Marmite there is a distinct polarization uh, if you're British, you usually like Marmite. If you're from Australia, New Zealand, you usually like Vegemite. It's kind of like here in the States. You are either a Pepsi person or a Coke person. Even though the recipes vary slightly, you know, you're, you're one or the other. But essentially what this is, is when you, when you process beer, when you distill beer, after they make that vat, all of that sludgy stuff on the bottom has all that flavor. That is essentially what this is. This is love in a tube, as far as I'm concerned. Let's try our Jack Link's beef jerky. Nice and meaty. Something you could definitely put in your chest pocket and eat while you were actually walking on the move to give you some extra protein and sustained calories. Why it's sitting there looking almost sad and lonely, let's try our tropical sports drink. Mm. It has kind of like a mango-y flavor to it. I like that. It's okay. Then our, what was this, apple and blueberry muesli bar.
The actual muesli part, the cookie part, is very dry. But inside the blueberry and apple is still very soft and very pliable. Even though it's it's not like kind of like a fig newton where the fig really comes through. This is very mild. So it would appeal to most palates, which really that's its purpose. Now before I break into the M&Ms or the musk flavor lifesavers, I'm going to try this cheese. And this cheese is usually pretty darn stiff. You can heat it if you want to. <laughs> but of course, for safety's sake, don't heat it unless if you've opened it. I have a can of Russian cheese that's still partially on my uh, kitchen ceiling because I didn't monitor it. But here we go. Cheese with a crisp bread. And this is just your standard everyday cheddar processed cheese. Let's take a look at our poor, poor abused chocolate bar. Now, we know that it's going to taste good. It's going to be good. But they always kind of look like hell sometimes. See the inside of it? Even the inside has a little bit of bloom. But I mean, you can hear Allie growling in the background. She don't like something. Let's give this a try. Yep, chocolate's chocolate. That's how that works out. And then our musk flavor lifesaver. It just has a different taste to the American palate. I I know most people that I know we like we like an assortment of flavors. So you can have some like lime and orange and instead of just one flavor. But it, it's a cultural thing. Uh, like where my cousins are in, in in Scandinavia, they have a serious major affinity with licorice. Where I don't share that passion with them either. So, for all of you that like musk flavored lifesavers, good on you. All right, down to the last two items. Of course, we have M and M's. Everybody should be familiar and know what an M and M looks like. They are in very good condition, seeing how they're just a few years old. Let me see if I can find a date on here. Actually, maybe they're not. See, the best buy date is by 2015. But I'm going to eat them anyway. And, of course, the last thing that we have is our sugar-free gum to help you clean out your mouth and give you a nice, clean, refreshing flavor. And this is lemon lime. It's not crunchy at all. I was expecting to get that nice hard shell crunch and it was it's very soft. So you can actually bend it and crush into it just with your fingers. Mm. Has a a slight lemon lime taste to it. But it does seem to get all that grit out of those pores of your teeth until you can do some serious dental care with a toothbrush and floss. Okay, everybody, this was a review of an Australian Defense Force ration. It was Menu A. It was a 2015 ration. It was perfect. Thank you, Dan, very much for sending it to me. Next ration I'm going to be doing is an Italian ration. So, like I said, if anybody out there has experience or knows a little about them, please get in contact with me so I don't kind of gaff it up like last time. So, take care, everybody. Bye.